Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Moses Godane Institute uh, Friday Lecture Series. Today, we are looking at innovation value chain uh, ideation to commercialization. We are uh, bringing this to you uh, with Mr. Tabang Mufukeng. Uh, he holds a BTEC degree in marketing from DUT, MBA uh, from Mancosam, and MCOM in leadership uh, from the UKZN. He's also trained at Reggio Emilio in Italy. Uh, over the years, he has served as a chairperson of the SME Forum at TIKZN, a business advisor of note and a mentor for Umsobombu Youth Fund. Um, he has directed uh, mentorship programs uh, in partnership with South African business linkages. He has represented the South African business delegation in a number of occasions, uh, both inward and outward trade missions with CEDA and the DTI. Mr. Mfukeng served as a managing director of Ingaba Trade and Logistics, and he was part of the Secretariat for KZN Economic Council. He is currently a director of Sabelwe Business Enterprise, executive director for As Asino Energy, um, and a CEO of Samak Engineering Solutions. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring to you Mr. Tabang Mfukeng. Thank you. Thank you so much um, to the Moses Kodani Institute for the opportunity. Um, as I just said, my name is Tabang Mufukeng. Um, who is a, a, a managing director for a company called Summer Engineering. Um, I would like to take you through the presentation today on innovation value chain from ideation to commercialization. Uh, Summer Engineering Solutions. Um, this company that we started many years ago. So uh, we're presenting on the topic of ideation to commercialization and looking at the value chain. However, I'll make a specific reference to some engineering because uh, the company has walked the walk and uh, is and they is talking the talk. Um, the company uh, is premised on innovation. Currently it has got three patents registered under its company name. Um, and the complement staff of uh, of uh, young people that are well grouped in terms of uh, mechanical engineering as well as electrical engineering. So we've got a diverse skill set. The company is a member of the Devon Chamber of Commerce and also the Green Building uh, Council. Uh, it is also a member of the American Society for Heating, uh, Refrigeration and Air Conditioning as well as the South African uh, Institute for Refrigeration. Um, over the years, um, the company has built a sound reputation and uh, has been recognized by credible stakeholders. Um, yet before last, or a few years back, I think it was in 2017, we were recognized as one of the top five youth innovation companies in the African continent during the Africa Innovation in Daba, um, in Kauke. And that propelled us to look forward uh, uh, towards engaging and making a, con a, co a considerable difference is within the innovation fraternity. And um, the previous year, we were recognized by the South African Group as the most innovative company in South Africa. Uh, and uh, a number of accolades have followed then going forward, and uh, which we are currently partners with one of the leading companies in innovation in America called free change materials that look at the thermal storage uh, technology and uh, that has been featured in a number of uh, publications and one of them is the Raka Mark Journal magazine. We have launched and, um, uh, and a number of products which are not novel however which have reached the stage of post uh, of, of uh, pre-commercialization and uh, we are looking towards the commercialization stage. Um, going forward, um, the company is currently uh, part of the global clean tech uh, innovation. So we are amongst the top 20 countries that are competing on the global uh, competition and uh, we just went to Cape Town a few weeks back uh, on that quest to be recognized. 
The picture that you see currently is one of our innovation, which is called thermal storage. That uh, we have installed at the Mahosa University of Technology, where we have saved uh, the, me the mechanical engineer block last year 26% on the energy savings. So it's, a, it's, a, it's not a substitute of an HVAC system, however, it's a, it's a thermal storage air conditioning system that uses ice not a novel technology. However, we have created our own system in its own way, and we were funded by TIA, the Technology Innovation Agency, to ensure that uh, we are able to realize those uh, savings. Um, maybe let's speak about innovation now. I, I hope we are most of us are fond of what is innovation. Uh, there are two years in innovation, or a number of years in innovation. Um, I'll talk about the new product development. As well as, uh, I've lost the slide. Okay, new product development, thank you. And uh, we look at also operational efficiency. That talks to continuous improvement, which the Japanese term is Kaizen. So I know that there have been a number of uh, new horizons, like for example, uh, the innovation in the Uber business processes, as well as uh, Airbnb and other uh, technologies that have changed the ball game altogether. Now, it is a thought-provoking sentiment to think of it that there are disruptive innovations currently uh, that is attested by Christian, Reino, and McDonald in their paper uh, that looks at the disruptive innovation. But for the sake and the benefit of today's presentation, uh, I would like us to look closely at the new product development and the processes of innovation. And there's been a number of studies that have been carried by uh, different authors within the academic fraternity, uh, from Rogers, who uh, is among uh, one of the authors that have looked uh, at the empirical evidence of the innovation and the innovation value chain in, 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 in his paper from 1983 to date. And there are also other scholars that have added for and contrasted some of the views that he had presented. Uh, for an instance, uh, we describe the new product development as a six-phase progress that involves recognizing the problem and doing applied research, developing the innovation, commercializing the innovation, diffusing it, and adopting the innovation. So, but the most interesting part, uh, which is what we are talking about today, which is the innovation value chain, um, it is asserted that the innovation value chain can have an important impact modern technology adoption uh, by Sweden and just 2019, so it's a recent paper or a recent publication. Now, Hansen and Biskin show 2007, state that like Michael Porter, a very chain who is well known um, for a number of theories that he has uh, contributed in the body of knowledge uh, from your five forces model to your value chain uh, that looks at transforming raw materials into finished food. Also, the innovation value chain has a process. So he defines, or they define this process as a three model or three phase approach. And the first being generating ideas and converting those ideas as well as diffusing the ideas. And of course, where there's been also other studies by Europa et al. that look at the knowledge sourcing transformation and exploitation. Um, let's talk about ideation. Uh, conceptualizing uh, new ideas. So there are a number of spheres that happen from that stage because it's the beginning stage whereby you come with an idea, then what do you do once you develop or you have thought about that idea? So the concept development, you need to develop that concept and then you can do a provisional patent. Uh, and from there, you can register a patent in IPCT so that whatever that you think is normal should be tested so that it can be checked whether are there any other similar technological development uh, locally or abroad. And then you can be able to register that and it can become your full patent either through attorneys and their institutions here in South Africa that assist for that to happen. And the most Kodane can guide and they are also very good in terms of assisting and guiding uh, innovators in going through that. Now, looking at the value chain, 
as defined by uh, these scholars, they say the idea generation uh, comprises of creating within a unit or coming up with something new. And uh, it looks also if it's an existing business uh, across pollination where we can move from one unit to another unit. Uh, we can also look at external uh, parties outside from the firm and how can then the company convert those ideas so that that, that comprises of the screening process uh, for the initial funding. So how can this idea be funded? And uh, also, how do we move the idea from it being an idea to it being a, a prototype? Uh, once it's been a, an industrial prototype, then it can be ready to hit the market, of course. There are processes that follow in terms of looking at the market and so forth. But at the end, it is a nomination whereby uh, the idea can be, uh, uh, can be diffused. Uh, I will move to the following slide. Let's look at the critical steps in innovation. This is the core of ideation to commercialization because in between, uh, a lot of companies and a lot of uh, individuals or SMEs, they miss the point or they miss the mark. And you cannot move to another step and leave the other behind. As I have uh, eloquently outlined in the patenting and the proof of concept, we need to develop an industrial prototype. It becomes easier if you have a software that assists in terms of doing that so that you can be able to make simulations that can be verified uh, by engineers or the industry bodies to ensure that your innovation can function. Only then you can move into an industrial prototype, which is the construction stage. Now, at most, this I always argue with my partner, he says, no, it's not a trial and error because you try many things and they do not work. Uh, it depends on the definition of trial and error and then you, until you get all the properties of the variables in the way that you want them to be. And if all that you have desired and it ticks all the boxes, then you will have your prototype that could be ready for installation or demonstration that the technology works. Uh, we were fortunate that uh, two of our innovations, uh, which was the first one that I can make an example, is, uh, is, a, is a mobile air conditioning unit that uses thermal storage. So it freezes the ice uh, during the night and during the day, which is blowing with the air. So I know many of us are found that when we, we are visiting uh, AMA events, you, you, you happen to find that it's a beautiful thermal heat, a beautiful temp, but it's extremely hot. Uh, your hands are always flapping in your face. So this innovation was designed particularly to address that kind of a challenge and come with a solution. So this is was one of the groundbreaking uh, innovations that led to uh, us coming up with a smaller unit that can be used for households due to the demand. However, for today's presentation purposes, uh, I'd like to take you through the cycle, which it was in, in, in steps in the previous slide, is ideation, proof of conduct, functional prototype, commercial prototype development, and of course, manufacturing or creating a manufacturing line. However, there are some impediments that mitigate uh, the prevalence of the innovation uh, running and one of them is receiving funding. We are fortunate in South Africa that we have got the Department of Science and Technology, and uh, it has got agents that it utilizes to reach SMME. And I will mention a few which were some of engineering has benefited from. In Rotec, for an example, we received the grant funding from years back of up to 400,000. And uh, the Technology Innovation Agency um, that who assisted us in in the technological development funding of uh, close to 8 million, which was broken down into phases, whereby we were able to develop two of our products, the first one being uh, the mobile air conditioning unit and a physical air conditioning unit that is currently being tested during the pre-commercialization stage at the Mango Security of Technology. Of course, there are development finance 
institutions that you can access, like your DTI, ITALA, your NEF, and others, etc. Of course, another funding uh, you know, uh, model could be debt finance, which is going through commercial banks. We have started using one of the banks that have funded uh, our commercial, uh, our PICOM, our, 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 our technology, which we have partnered with the American company that I've spoke to you about. And the other one is looking at angel investors, and most importantly, the venture capitalists. I know that in other parts of the world, venture capitalists are very crit critical role players, and they assist in terms of uh, funding technology where you don't have a bankable feasibility study or where banks do not like to take the risk because the challenge becomes the risk. What if a product does not hit the market? Then, commercialization. Oh, I really wish many people who are within the innovation fraternity can start by having a commercialization in mind before the ideation. However, a subsequent consolidation of undertaking these two uh, points from ideation to commercialization that they are implemented simultaneously. Whilst you are working on developing and improving your technology, but in mind, you start to ask thought provoking questions in terms of the, are there any EIA processes that are required? Uh, how will I market this product? Who is my target market? What is the segmentation? How many people will we need so that we can take through this process to the market? And the operational efficiency, the aggregate scheduling, how are we going to handle the demand and the supply? And uh, also doing the projections in terms of your cash flows, because cash flow is very important in business uh, and, 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 and starting uh, commercializing a project. Looking at the IRR, the internal rate of return. So there are a number of things, and one of them is standardization and grading. Once your product is ready to hit the market, there are critical questions because of competitiveness. Now there are competition uh, in the in the industry sector. You find that you'll be asked a question, but the, how are we going to be certain that your product will perform according to what you have said? So. Either you take it through your SAPS or your TUV, which is an international standardization, or alternatively, you look at Agreement SA if the technology does not have a current standard that can be benchmarked against. And the most important, your process workflow, your standard operational processes or procedures, they call them SOT. Do you have them in place? So, a lot of thought needs to go into that. Also, in commercialization, Critical question, if you if you look at the slide that looks at the business model canvas, uh, I'd like us to start it from the right end, which is looking at customer segments. Who are your customers? And uh, during your innovation, you need to verify and go and test your product. Go and do your market research. That who are my competitors? Which space am I going to play? What is the current uh, 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 market price of my market, and what niche can I get from this? And also, you need to start building customer relationships because it's very important. And also, looking at the channels of distribution, how are you going to distribute your product? If you are going to distribute it nationally, are you going to use current players, or are you going to develop new channels of distribution? Also, you need to have a strong value proposition. <laughs> what differentiates yourself distinctively from the products that are in the market? And you look at the key activities that will assist you to identify those distinctive features that will make you a wow in the market so that people can just control for your product and be willing to pay that extra cost if your price is, 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 is a bit high, uh, depending on your pricing model, whether you use the market penetration strategy or the market premium strategy. And we look, you need to look at the key resources that are available at your disposal. And also the resources that you do not have at your disposal. How do you consolidate your weaknesses and, 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 and get other people or other resources that may give you a competitive strength? And also, most importantly, are key partnerships or strategic partnerships. Uh, if you see that you are lacking in other areas, partner with big players, with global players or national players, so that you can be able to have that competitive edge in the market. And the 
bottom line uh, looks at the operation uh, in terms of the cost structure. Now, accounting people will tell you about your know, income statement, your balance sheet, and your cash flow statement. However, most importantly, uh, it is incumbent that you need to look at how are you going to fund this innovation of yours. The capital structuring model. I've spoken to uh, a number of models that look at even debt to equity or else uh, other, other models that I've discussed before. And of course, most importantly as well, your revenue stream, your sales projection, how much are you going to make? Will you be able to, to carry your overhead? in a given period of time. So these are all critical questions that you need to answer when you are looking at now going for commercialization. Um, it is a complex exercise, not an easy exercise, but that has got stages that you need to follow. And I'm most certain that institutions like most Kotane are a incredible uh, source of reference that can assist in terms of identifying at which stage is your innovation at and how can you go forward in advance in identifying uh, lucrative partners that can assist in terms of you arriving where you want to arrive. Uh, I want us to look at the Global Innovation Index uh, that was published in previous year uh, and where we are as a country in South Africa in terms of innovation. Uh, we were rated number 36. Um, and if you look at the top three, is the United States of America. We all know that uh, there's an area called the Silicon Valley, uh, which has been coined as the innovation space in the globe. And uh, in Germany, Germany is well known, as you can see, they are number two uh, for their innovation, particularly I know in the automotive industry and other related sectors, they take innovation very seriously, as well as Japan the best country. And very interesting, the, 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 the case of Japan. Japan has mastered uh, the art of creating uh, innovation processes for continuous improvement. They call it Kaizen. Uh, and there are other models like Joshua Hazen. Those are Japanese words. Please don't ask me how do I know them. I saw them somewhere and hence I'm, I'm speaking about them. Um, the other one is the Total Productive Tenant System. So it assists them in terms of operational efficiency, and they are well known for just in time production and their manufacturing uh, capacities, which are a global phenomenon. So if it is, it is, it is very important to look, right we are here locally, but to think globally and to look at what trends are there and what is happening. Just to make a, a one example, for example, in Germany, we were privileged some other year, I think it was in 2013, to visit. Um, Berlin and Stuttgart, and we were introduced to one institution called Stainbase. I think most of us are fond of the technology station. So Stainbase is the brainchild, or if, uh, if we move to the following slide, it's where I indicated uh, their, their innovation uh, strides that they've made in terms of, I think for me, it's an indelible mark that uh, they have moved the goalpost in terms of the divide from the universities of higher learning or academia with the industry sector. So they were, they've been able to bring in all your professors and your researchers and your scholars and employ them as an institution and pay them accordingly so that they can be ignited to, to move uh, or assist companies with, the, with, the, with the technologies to move them to another level. So as you can see, in 2013, just like seven years ago, uh, they were employing about close to 7,000 researchers and they and they assisted by then about half a million companies in their technological solution. Uh, and uh, it's a network of professors and professionals. So it's where science meets legal fraternity and the financial uh, astute business people so that they can be able to move in synergy and in one accord. And by then, they were able to bring a turnover of about 141 million euros. For me, it's a wow. So it is not a, an easy solution, but it requires a number of institutions to think alike. And uh, 
if I can mention a few stand based institutions in South Africa that are part of the technology station. I know here in, in KZN there is one which is the Bangosu University of Technology. They have got, uh, they call them Chumano or Chumisan or something like that. And there are other ones in Tuane and in Cape Town with different industries. They are either it's chemical, uh, it's, uh, metal, uh, so those are all types of uh, institutions or, or assistance that you can get and receive if you are keen in working through coming up with formidable solutions. I know we are pressed with time uh, in those few slides and a few ways, a lot of information. I've tried my level best to compress it into a few slides. Um, I think it should be best that for now I can allow a session of questions and answers. And thank you very much for being a wonderful audience and thank you for Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fukeng. Um, what an interesting uh, conversation today on, on innovation. Uh, I think I have uh, quite a few questions for you. Uh, one of them is, what are pain points for innovation from idea to commercialization? Where, where are the struggles at? Yeah, um, if you look at, I'll take you through uh, a slide number 12. Uh, if that says critical steps in innovation. That's what from M1, patenting and proof of concept. And uh, it's, it's, I've seen a number of ent uh, entrepreneurs that are aspiring to, uh, to, to delve into the innovation space. People have got wonderful ideas, brilliant, phenomenal ideas, but they do not understand the process. So I think we should uh, market more the process on how to do that because this comes with protecting your intellectual property, where it starts. Once you have done your proof of concept, the first question that they ask you if you are applying for the, the, the patent or the provisional patent is whether have you shared this uh, brilliant idea or innovation of yours with anyone, have you, wrote, have you showed it to anyone, have you written it down and presented it elsewhere. And most of us, when we take this to, we go present our uh, ideas before we can patent them. So it becomes like a chicken and egg because you can't patent something without showing it to some people. So, but there is a process that you do, uh, that you follow. Uh, I know that institutions like Invotech that can assist in terms of how do you work on your proof of content uh, in your closet before you can take it out in the market. And the other one becomes the funding because you find that uh, for you, it's a costly exercise to find to, to fund uh, an industrial prototype. Uh, now, the, 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 the Department of Science and Technology through the Technology Innovation Agency, and there are others like you, CI, SPI, so where you can be able to apply for the industrial prototype once you get a proof of concept. And of course, lastly, the pre-commercialization, I think there is a gap there. And uh, it's a pity that I am currently uh, busy working on a, a page, on a, on a, on a research uh, study to, to look at the ideation to commercialization, this gap, that a lot of industry sectors and a lot of SMEs, they fail there because how do you, once you are developing a technology, be market ready? Be ready to hit the road running with people that have been there for years and with all the financial markets. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. I, th I think that the take home for each and every innovator on this call today is be careful of how you share um, your, 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 your information. Be careful of how you share your innovation before you can actually know that you've got something good. Because by the time you want to protect your IP, by the time you want to protect your idea, it has, it has long gone. Of course, funding will always be a challenge as we are challenged in, 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 in terms of early funding. Um, there is not much uh, for early innovation funding within within South Africa. But I think we look forward to, to the research paper, um, uh, uh, Mr. Fukeng. I do believe that this is a platform where we can share those findings and we can take the learnings as, as, as KZN and really try and assist the young and upcoming innovators uh, for those that are tuned in the calls, the Moses Kotana Innovation uh, Awards 
poll is out. We are closing on the 30th of September. If you're young and you're innovative and we have an idea, we're saying bring it to the fore. Let's look at it and let's let's work together in bringing um, innovation up to the fore and letting those that are innovative really benefit in creating uh, innovation that works. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank um, Mr. Tabang Mukukeng uh, for his presentation today. And we'd like to say thank you to each and everyone who is joining us on the call. My name is Wongi Wechulai. I'm the Manager Innovation at the Moses Kodana Institute. Thank you. Thank you so much.